or um, if you're joining us on the recording, welcome. Um, today we are talking about ACA, a dreaded topic for so many people <laughs> these days. I think it is one of the most confusing um, stressful things about this end of the year, beginning of the year time period um, for larger employers. So hopefully um, what I go over today will make um, your life just a little bit easier or, you know, clarify some things for your reporting this year. Um, if you already use the portal for reporting um, most of this you probably know, but there may be a couple reports in here that you don't know about that would be really helpful for you to start using for compliance stuff. Um, and then I'll also go over like all of the um, deadlines for this year. So, all right, let's get into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is how Axiom can really help you um, alleviate your administrative duties with ACA. So. ACA takes a lot of, um, you know, paper filing, populating forms, stuffing envelopes, putting uh, stamps on those envelopes, you know, putting all the mailing addresses on, getting them out to employees. It's very time consuming. And the great thing about our system is that if you do ACA through us, we will take care of all of that for you as long as you are um, reporting everything correctly throughout the year. So, uh, you know, employee benefit plans, if we have the correct pricing in the system, if we, um, if you're, you know, reporting that employees were offered benefits at certain periods in time, um, all of that is going to make it really easy to populate your forms at the end of the year. And then all we will do is, print them for you, we'll get them mailed out for you, and then we electronically file with the IRS for you. So you don't have to do anything except verify that the information that we're getting ready to send out is um, correct and um, that it looks okay to you. We don't wanna send anything out, out before we get your approval, but um, everything is populated by us and um, filed then by us. So. That's a really great thing. It saves a lot of time. I don't think um, you can really replace all of that time that you know you would spend on stuffing envelopes and all that good stuff. It's no fun. Um, okay, so next is tra uh, tracking compliance. So with the proper setup in the system, you can track standard measurement periods. You can track upgrades in status, downgrades in status, um, if there are any compliance issues. You can track um, you know, the hours that people have worked each uh, month so that you know like if they are um, a variable hour employee, whether they need to um, be offered benefits at the end of their measurement period or if they can you know, be considered a full or a part-time employee instead. Um, so there's a lot of different reports in the system that you can run. Under my report, ACA, there's several different things here. The ones that we'll talk about today is this ACA data detailed and then the ACA data summary. Um, the form 1094C and the form 1095C, that's where we do the population of forms. So I'll get that in a second. And then the year end processing is where we actually um, do the filing. So you won't need to do anything with any of that. Um, okay, so this is the ACA data detailed and I have this, excuse me, in a training view. And um, so yours might look a little bit different. You'll probably have a little bit more information over here if you have people who are in a um, variable hour status, but this is what the report's gonna look like. You're gonna have all of your employee names. You can do this by month. Um, so right now I just have it for November, but you know, obviously you can change your calendar range like you can anything else in the system. It's gonna show the amount of hours that they've worked, what their monthly status is, so all of these people have worked a full-time status based on the hours, but then some of them might have a part-time ACA status. So if I have their ACA profile in the system set to variable hourly, 
then that's where this ACA status comes from. So they're probably still in their measurement period or I am being non-compliant and I have not offered them benefits yet and I need to make sure that I do that. So um, this is a really good report to see what kind of discrepancies you have here. So anyone who has this full-time month status but a part-time ACA status is probably gonna get flagged for compliance. So if I move over here, I can see what month they are in in their standard measurement period, stability month, and then whether an affordable plan was offered, whether minimum value was offered. And I will go through anyone who doesn't already have ACA set up in the system. We would get your benefit plan set up. We would get your standard measurement period set up based on you know however you wanna offer benefits to variable hour employees. Um, and then we would make sure to set up, you know, whether it was minimum value and then the system kind of calculates if it's an affordable plan based on the, um, the standards that year. So I, I can't remember exactly what it is this year, but in, in previous years, it was like 9.5% of the federal poverty rate. So um, we put all those numbers in at the beginning of the filing year, and then it kind of calculates whether it was affordable or not. So you don't have to do anything with that. We do all of that for you. Um, and then it tells you if there's a possible downgrade, if there's a compliance alert. Um, these compliance alert comes up here too. Um, the average hours in a measurement period. And then it will also tell you what their series codes are. So, you know, the whether they were offered coverage, how much it was worth, and then whether they took it or not. So those will be obviously a lot more um, detailed if you are tracking things correctly. This is kind of a training view, but these columns are all super, super helpful throughout the year to look at on a monthly basis, like just go back. Um, you know, you can even have these reports emailed to you. So. If, you know, on the first of the month, you want this report emailed to you for the previous month just to be able to go through and and look and see if there are any compliance alerts. That's so, so helpful, I found, um, for our clients. So the other view that I wanted to show you is this um, summary view. So the ACA data summary, you can find it under my reports, ACA, ACA data summary, or you can also go to the data detailed and then click on the quick link to it here. So the ACA data summary is going to give you most of the same information just on a one line basis rather than having it separated out by employee. So each line is going to be a month in the year. So you can see November, these are the hours that the total employees worked. This is how many people I had in full-time status. This is how many people I had in a part-time status. This is how many people I offered an affordable plan to, which is really awful since I have 150 full-time employees. I only offered to six. That's not good. <laughs> um, minimum value plan offered. Well, that's a little bit better. Um, compliance alert, approaching ACA full-time, possible downgrades, and then how many employees are going to be tested next month. And each of these numbers you can click on, which is so awesome because if I want to know how many people I have a compliance alert on and who I have that compliance alert on, I can just click on this and it's going to bring up that list of people. And then I can actually go into that person's ACA um, detailed history, and it's going to tell me with these little exclamation points what my compliance alert is. So this employee has not been offered, offered an affordable plan. I can see that they're a full-time, and they've been um, – their full-time month status, full-time ACA status, so I should be offering them affordable plans, which is where that compliance alert comes in. If I go back in the year, I can see that I have compliance alerts almost all year long because I haven't offered this guy an affordable plan. And a lot of times that may not be the actual case. Like you may have offered that employee an affordable plan, but this is kind of a checks and balance system to make sure that you are reporting everything correctly in the system. So if you're like, oh no, I offered Georgia plan, um, then you can reach out to me or if you know exactly what you're doing, um, we can get it corrected in the system so that it is you know, reporting correctly in, in your reports. And then at the end of the year, of course, on your 1095 forms. So the other thing is approaching full-time status. 
So I have all these people that I can, you know, report full time, but I'm not. So I know that these people are going to come up on my list soon to offer coverage to. So all of that is super helpful with the hours. I can pull this up and see how many hours they've worked each year or each month. Um, this is similar to the report, the data detailed report. It's just kind of in a more concise way, but you can see all of the information that's in the data detailed by clicking on each of these numbers. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So how are the forms generated? So at the end of the year or beginning of the year, most of the time, since we have to wait until the end of the year to file, um, what my team does is we will go in to this ACA form, form 1095C and we will add new forms for your company. Oh, let me go. Oh, I don't have this added for the current year. Let's see if I have these populated for any new year. Okay. Sorry, guys, I don't have the 2018 plan year added. Um. So now let me try this again. Here we go. Okay. So all of the forms get generated. I select all the forms and then I populate them all. And again, this population is going to come from what you have been reporting throughout the year. So were you offering your, were you applying the correct benefit profiles to your employees telling us uh, telling the system what plans they were offered and at what price. And then were your employees electing plans through the system? Have you been applying benefit plans? If not, then your person's probably going to look like they waived coverage if they took coverage. So we need to make sure the benefit profiles are being, you know, populated and then dated correctly, and then that the benefit plans are dated correctly and that all of the benefit plans are being tracked within the system. So as long as that information is all being tracked on a um, you know regular basis and that it's all being done correctly, then your your forms are probably going to be pretty much ready to send after they're populated. If you're not sure if you're um, reporting things correctly, if you're dating things correctly in the system, then you may want to you know really really go through all these forms. And you may want to go through all these forms anyway, but for people who aren't really sure if they've been reporting correctly all year long, I strongly, strongly suggest that you look at every single form in detail to make sure they're all correct. Because if you have, if you missed something or didn't report something correctly, it is going to be solely your responsibility to pay any fines that result in um, the, you know, the misfiling or the um, the misinformation that's reported. So just want to put that out there. It is your responsibility as a client to review these and make sure the information is accurate. Okay, so if I go into any of these forms, I can see what was populated. A lot of my employees were not offered coverage this year, but if they were, this would be, you know, oops. 1A, oh my gosh, and then let's say 2H, she was offered and she took it. So I'll just save that, and then I would be able to go on to the next person. When you're auditing these, it's really easy if you just select all and then mass view so that you can kind of scroll through each one. You can also download these, so if it's easier for you to download the forms in like a PDF format and kind of scroll through, you know, a PDF document, that's another way to to do this. Um, so 
I would suggest though just going through and that way when you are in here you can make the changes as you go along so oh you know Hayden was actually supposed to be offered all year long and then he just was terminated here so let's say whoops you know 1a and I can you know copy and paste this all year up until September when he was let go and then Let's say he waived coverage though. So he was 2H. He was offered, he waived, but it was still affordable coverage based on the um, rate of pay safe harbor. And then these would just be that this person was not offered because they were not an employee. And then if the pricing's in the system for your benefit plans, all of that will populate here. Um, if for some reason an employee was offered different pricing than what was in the system, this is again where you would be able to edit what that pricing was. Um, you would just need to be able to prove, um, you know, with pay statements or whatever, if the IRS does, you know, question that pricing being different than other people, um, you would just want to be able to prove that that pricing was actually what that employee was paying. Um, so hopefully all of that makes sense. Um, and then once you have verified all of this information, you will contact us and let us know that the forms are ready to be finalized. So we will go through the finalization process. We will then begin to start printing the forms. We print them on pressure sealed paper to go to your employees. Um, and then once those are pressure sealed and all printed in pressure sealed, we will get them in the mail and sent out to employees and you don't have to do anything else. So the only real piece that you have to worry about in this is just the, um, you know, reporting throughout the year, the correct information, benefit profiles, and then benefit plans when, you know, there's open enrollment or if you have a new hire or life change events, um, make sure that information gets updated. And then you'll just have to verify the forms when we create them, and then that's it. Everything else is pretty much on us. So we also, like I mentioned at the beginning, file electronically with the IRS for you. So um, we provide you with, you know, the, um, the confirmation once we filed. And then if there are any, you know, notices that you get, we are happy to look at those with you and, um, try and do everything we can to gather what's in the system to show that you offered a person or that this that the coverage was um was affordable all of that good stuff anything that we have in the system we're happy to help you with um gathering that data <clears throat> um but we do have a new process this year that we're going to be sending out um so everyone who has um reported ACA with us in the past or that's going to this year, we will be requiring that you sign off on um, some liability documents just to alleviate any of that liability from Axiom. Um, we have been seeing fines start to roll in from the 2015 year and we're almost in 2019. So they're kind of three years behind on um, on that reporting stuff. So you know, I've seen fines up to a million dollars and, uh, you know, we bought that, of course, and we won, but we just want to make sure that everyone's taking it very seriously the way they are, you know, going through these forms and auditing these forms. It is something that the government is going to eventually get to. Who knows how many years it will take them, but you know, they're issuing fines for 2015, so I just want to stress how important it is that you're, you know, understanding how to enter the information into the system and how to check for the correct um, population of forms. So understanding what the codes mean, understanding uh, what affordable care or what affordable coverage is and how to calculate that number based on, you know, either the rate of pay or the um, 
the federal poverty line or their W-2, you know, being able to make those calculations is something that you should be able to do as an employer. And I think it's very important that everyone educates themselves on that. And I'm happy to teach anyone who has questions on that how to do those calculations. I'm happy to provide resources on the codes and um, when you should use each code and what they mean and all of that good stuff. We have a lot of good resources here. So we can help you with all of that, but I just want to make sure that everyone really understands how real this is and that it may not be going away. So um, with all of that being said, um, the 1095s are due to employees on March 4th. They just uh, extended that deadline a couple weeks ago. Um, so March 4th is when 1095s are due to employees. Um, so that would be uh, closer to the deadline for when we would have our clients get us all of their um, kind of sign off for us, us finalizing. Um, it'll probably be a little bit before March 4th, just so that we have time to print. And, you know, of course, you can get it way, way before March 4th if you're done. Um, we'll try and get everything out to you within the first couple of weeks of January so that you have time to verify the information. But March 4th is the deadline to get forms delivered to employees. So our deadline will be a little bit before that. Um, and then paper filing with the IRS is February 28th. We do not file with paper, but if you are doing your own filing, just so you know, February 28th is the deadline to file by paper. And then electronic filing with the IRS can really only be done if you have a specific code. You have to get an account set up with the IRS. It's a little bit, um, you have to like meet certain requirements. So not everybody can electronically file with the IRS. So we would have to do that on your behalf. Um, and that is due on April 1st. So we will make sure to file all of the um, all of the forms that we are doing for our clients this year by April 1st or before. Um, so that I think covers just about everything I wanted to talk about. Um, I guess I didn't mention, you know, if you're self-insured and you have fewer than 50 employees, you are also required to report um, anyone, any employer with greater than 50 employees are required to report greater than 50 full-time equivalent employees, I should say. Um, so let's see. I think that's about it. But we will be sending out communications here shortly after this video to um, to everyone. If you want us to file for you this year, um, just let us know, and then we will get you the new liability contract. And then um, once that's signed, we can uh, start getting everything together for you to start uh, going through the forms and verifying what's on them. We'll have to wait until the end of December to really populate those forms with the correct information because obviously, you know, you have new hires pop up or terminations, stuff like that. So we will wait until the very first of the year to start populating those forms. But the sooner that we can get the list of who needs to file with us, the better. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Hopefully everyone learned a little something today. I'm gonna to stay on for about five more minutes for questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to send them in the chat box. Um, this training will be posted on our YouTube channel by the end of the day. And uh, so you can rewatch if you need anything, but otherwise, thank you for joining me. Thank you for rewatching if you're doing the replay and um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll hear from you.
Okay, I don't see any questions coming through. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be any questions. So if you do have questions and I didn't get to you in the training, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, you can send it to T. Shively, that's uh, T S H I V as in Victor E L Y at Yahoo or at Yahoo at axiomhrs.com, and then um, I. I can answer your questions there, or you can feel free to call our, our line and um, my extension is 103. So 317 587 1019, extension 103. So I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting, but um, thank you again for joining me, and I will hopefully hear from you guys soon. Okay, bye.